Once again, Harbor Freight releases yet another affordable off-road winch. It's more refined, has new parts, yet still priced reasonably well for the average off-road enthusiast. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. It's quite obvious what we're doing. We're installing the new Harbor Freight Badlands winch onto the new JK build. So in the last video, we installed a new set of bumpers, both front and rear from Out of Hand Fab. We also installed some new fenders, some new tires and wheels, hood latches and lights, and really got this Jeep looking good. But before we hit the trails, really want to have a winch on the Jeep. So I started looking around online because it's been quite a while since I've done winch shopping. The last winch was actually the Harbor Freight Badland Apex, right when it came out. And we've been running that on Cassie's Jeep and it's done a phenomenal job. But when I was on Harbor Freight's website, something caught my eye. I saw their standard Badlands winch, however it had a different look to it than I was used to. It was still the ZXR, but the top hat looked completely different. And that's when I noticed they came out with a new winch model. Let's get this thing out of the box, on the Jeep, then on the trail so we can take an up close look at how this winch works. Grab a socket. Let's go. For $380, we get a 12,000 pound winch, 65 feet of steel cable, a removable control pack, a roller fair lead, our wired winch controller, some mounting hardware, a hook, our ground cable, and a disconnect switch. This is everything that we're gonna need to install this winch onto our Jeep. We're gonna make a few electrical connections in the back of the winch while we still have access to them. The three posts on the back of the winch are color coded for the cables. So I'm looking at the instructions, trying to figure out what in the world this is for. Yeah, so this is just an extension from the battery to the cutoff switch if you want. That was driving me crazy. This winch comes with wire rope as the only option. So if you're a big fan of synthetic line like me, you're gonna have to swap over. Now, if you do decide to keep the wire rope because it's a budget friendly option, we do get 3 8 wire rope, 65 foot long. That's the only downside. 65 foot runs out really fast, whether you're doing a recovery or you're trying to winch yourself out. Now, I went ahead and picked up the Harbor Freight Badland synthetic rope. This is 80 foot, it's a lot lighter. It's gonna be plenty strong. Power cables are hooked up to the battery. The winch is bolted down. It's time to hook up the remote and test this thing out. Before we hit the trails and test out the new winch, it's important that we pre-tension the synthetic line. So what we have to do is find a relatively flat surface, maybe a little bit uphill, unspool our winch line, hook it to a tree, and with no load, just winch all the way in. What this is gonna do is really tightly wind that synthetic line. That way it doesn't collapse on itself when we go to winch it the very first time. Looks like we're stuck. So it's digging the entire front axle into the mud. We're asking why a 12,000 pound winch for a small two-door Jeep that doesn't probably weighs 4,000 pounds. Now, 
just because your vehicle weighs 4,000 pounds doesn't mean in a scenario like this, you need a 4,000 pound winch. First off, just an incline itself can add about half the weight of a vehicle to the pulling resistance. Then you add in other factors such as rocks or mud like that, where we're literally dragging the Jeep through it. Yeah, you, can see where we you can easily exceed 10,000 pounds. So if you're gonna be hitting the trails, I would highly suggest a 12,000 pound winch whether you have a four door, a two door, you just never know what kind of situations you're gonna put yourself in. Everything, that's skip plate, all of it. Yep, just had to move the earth. Right there, keep going. Well, we kinda need to get stuck. It's gonna go right <laughs> Oh no! I'm stuck! I mean, it looks like we're stuck. Yeah. yeah, stabilizer's fine, but the bracket, it's all bent. In situations like this, when we're trying to winch a vehicle over a hill and we can't see, we're limited by the remote, you know, the controller wire distance. Luckily, Harbor Freight also has a wireless controller. This is the Badland Apex wireless controller. It also works on this winch. Now this kit does not come with the winch, but it's nice having it as an option. So far, this winch has been doing exactly what it needs to do. Not really sure what that test was proving but wanted to try it out just to see if it would drag the jeep dead weight so you know this i don't want to make this a comparison video but we i've i've used a lot of winches i got the uh the worn z on on the jk cassie's running the badland apex on hers on the jt we have the worn evo mike's a big uh 7284 80, 8274 oh man see how see how quick he corrected that so he's a big worn guy and I, there's so many winches out there and they fit everybody's needs differently if you're looking for just a standard winch that looks like it is going to hold up on the trail pretty well this might fit the bill 380 bucks isn't bad this style of winch having that new modern look is new to harbor freight but that's by no means new to the winch industry you know that's about 10 years old but it's cool seeing harbor freight updating their like base model winch and turning it into a cool off-road winch and so far it's held up and done every single thing that we've asked it to I'm really surprised on how well this Jeep is doing for, you know, open diffs, 33 inch all terrains. This thing is doing a really good job out here on the trails, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here to test out the winch. probably make it up that as well right there yeah. just go crazy you're on the you're peeling open the skid plate
The one thing I wanted to test out was really get this thing wedged on a rock, see how we can pull it out. So, you hooked up? I'm gonna see how far the remote works. I think this is far enough away. Now, if that performance from a Harbor Freight winch doesn't impress you, I don't know what will. Now there is one thing to keep in mind in regards to winches and that is the duty cycle. Different brand winches have different duty cycles. For example, I tried finding worn duty cycles on their website and their instruction manual or owner's manual and it just says it's designed for intermittent use, which is fairly unhelpful. Whereas the Badland ZXR actually gives us a duty cycle number, but it's safe to say that we completely disregarded that and put that winch way beyond its operating duty cycle and it held up fine. The power cables weren't getting hot, the winch wasn't making any noise, it wasn't smoking, and it didn't slow down whatsoever. I'm sure there's more we could throw at it, do a torture test, winch it up a tree, but in my mind all that's pretty irrelevant. All I care about is this thing actually gonna hold up to normal everyday off-road use. After a long day of wheeling, a lot of winching, it's obvious that the ZXR could hold up to what we ask of it. Now on the flip side of that, we've only taken it out one time. So we're gonna have to follow up with a long-term review and see how this holds up, you know, after continuous use. Now luckily we probably are gonna go off-roading again and most likely we're gonna get stuck. So we'll put this to the test and see how it holds up. But the one thing, the only really downside to this winch that I noticed yesterday was the line speed and how slow it is. Now that's not a huge thing to look for when you're purchasing a winch, unless you are a racer and you plan on being in a competition where every second counts. When we're just out there wheeling, having fun, we don't necessarily need the fastest line speed because as long as it pulls us out of it, I'm happy with it. Compared to the old ZXR, Harbor Freight was able to bump this winch up from 15 feet per second drawing 100 amps up to 26 feet per minute drawing 62 amps. Now if we compare that to the Badland Apex at 31 feet per minute at 60 amps, this is still pretty close, just a little bit slower. Now they calculate all that amperage and line speed with zero load, but it does kind of follow a graph. The more load you have on it, the more amps it's gonna draw. It's nice seeing that they were able to squeeze out more performance and barely increase the cost at all. But with that being said, we're gonna get this Jeep and all the other three Jeeps out in the field and do a line speed comparison test between this one, the Badland Apex, and the JKU's Warren Xeon 12S. Cassie's Apex winch, 85 foot of synthetic cable, just like the swap that we did on the ZXR, 85 foot. Now the Warren, we actually get an additional 20 feet that goes all the way out here, it can be helpful, but you know, just use a winch extension if you need that extra length. No load on the lines, we're gonna do a little race and see which one can spool in the fastest. The Xeon does have the extra 20 feet, but it's supposed to be a lot faster, and I would hope it would be because it's a $2,000 winch versus a sub $400 winch. We can't even do a proper test because the worn remote is having issues. Let me go show you. The Apex was uh, was putting in the work. It's almost halfway done. The worn remote is messing up. When I press in, you can see it's intermittent. I'll let go. Still shows red. Out. In. Looks like the Warren is out of the race. 
And that was not planned, just so anybody, I know people are gonna come in here and say, oh, man, I'm an internet guy. Round two. Oh, that's a good one. It is hard to beat the 30 feet per minute that the Badland Apex offers. Even if the Warren Winch controller was working, that comes in at 28 feet per minute at 62 amps. So take it for what it's worth, but the Harbor Freight winches, they are stepping up their game. It's like their off-road department is really trying to beat the competition. You know, they're coming out with all kinds of cool off-road goodies, recovery goodies, the winches, the soft shackles, the tree straps, the recovery straps. It seems like they really stepped up their game with the Apex winch, and by them doing that, it allowed them to really refine their standard basic winch. You know, in the past, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the ZXR just because it was extremely slow. It wasn't that powerful. It was loud and it had some inherent issues. But this new one, I think this is going to be a pretty popular winch because it looks good. It is priced right and it works. So if I was to choose between the ZXR and the Apex, naturally, I would probably pick the Apex. But there are a lot of situations and a lot of bumpers and Jeeps or not even Jeeps, just different off-road rigs that need a small compact winch depending on where you're mounting it in the apex well that's it's huge and even though the zxr starts off with a steel cable which is fine for most people we can still upgrade the winch with synthetic line the new hook new fair lead and the remote kit and depending on the time of year what the sales were i priced it out it's a nine dollar difference between this setup and the apex but even without all of that stuff i think the zxr is going to be a perfect winch for a ton of off-road vehicle owners now i have three winches out that need to be spooled back in and pre-tensioned this is a brand new winch it's like two weeks old finally hidden the stores i think the oklahoma city uh, store had two left in stock but there's zero reviews online whatsoever youtube there were none the harbor freight website didn't have any reviews at all and then a google search seemed like the internet didn't know this thing existed except for harbor freight so if you're watching this and you've been eyeballing the winch it Hopefully it, you know, helped you come to a conclusion that this can be a very good affordable winch. And just like every other video, thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and go down to the comments and share some of your past winch experiences. What brands do you prefer? What have you had failures with? And specifically, what on the winch failed? I'm curious to hear. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week.